Good morning. Welcome to our worship together today. Would you like to take your seats as we begin our time of focusing in? And as we do that, we acknowledge our indebtedness to those who've provided this place for us, who care for this place from day to day, those who've cared for this land over the generations, and particularly the Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. And we acknowledge that our First Peoples have never ceded sovereignty of this land, and we affirm our commitment towards working towards a better future with our First Peoples. We're going to hear Psalm 145, which is a reasonably long psalm, but a psalm, great psalm of praise and thanksgiving. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall lord your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and will meditate on your wonderful works. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his compassion is over everything that he has made. All your works shall give you thanks, O Lord, and your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his deeds and gracious in all he does. The Lord upholds those who are falling and raises up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in season. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all. He watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. We're going to sing together a hymn that echoes in part this psalm and many of the other psalms. We praise, we worship you, O God.
Let's come before God as we continue to offer God our adoration and praise and as we bring our confession to God. Let's pray. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light inaccessible hid from our eyes, most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. We praise you, creator God, for the beauty of this world, a beauty you have given us to enjoy and to care for. We praise you for your care for each one of us and for all creation, for your knowledge of each of us, your understanding of our needs and struggles and concerns. We praise you for your presence with us at all times and for your desire to relate to us, to communicate with us. Help us, O oh God, to focus our thoughts on you that we may experience afresh your grace and mercy and love as fresh gifts in our lives. We praise you for the blessing that you give us in revealing your love to us in Jesus Christ. With his endless love flowing through us and your Holy Spirit guiding us, may our love for you and for all you have created never cease. God, the source of loving kindness and strength, we worship you. Jesus, our foundation of our faith, we worship you. Holy Spirit, ground of our very being, we worship you. O oh God, your knowledge of us is overwhelming. You know us inside and out, through and through. You know what we're going to say even before we say it and understand the thoughts and intents of our hearts. We come before you aware of the darkness which so easily permeates our hearts. Forgive us, O oh God, and cleanse our thoughts. Renew our minds by the inspiration of your spirit. We come aware of how easily we lose our vision of you, how easily we become overwhelmed by things around us. We become aware of how often we fail to recognize your good gifts to us. We come aware of our failure to prayerfully bring our world and its needs to you regularly. So easily we can become absorbed in our own concerns and fail to look beyond our immediate environment. Help us, O oh God, to come to you with issues of importance to our global community and not just the desires of our own hearts. Gracious God, work within our lives, cleanse, renew and transform us by the work of your life-giving spirit. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We celebrate the love and goodness of God in the assurance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and so we can know that our sins too are forgiven and we are thankful. We're going to continue to worship God through singing and we're singing a more contemporary song but one that also focuses on our desire to express our love and our commitment to God. My Jesus, my Saviour, Lord, there is none like you.
Julie is going to bring the Bible readings to us today. Thanks. The first reading is Psalm 149, verses 1 to 5. Sing a new song to the Lord. Praise him in the assembly of his faithful people. Be glad, Israel, because of your creator. Rejoice, people of Zion, because of your king. Praise his name with dancing. Play drums and harps in praise of him. The Lord takes pleasure in his people. He honours the humble with victory. Let God's people rejoice in their triumph and sing joyfully all night long. The second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter, eight, beginning, uh, chapter 5, beginning at verse 8. You yourselves used to be in the darkness, but since you have become the Lord's people, you are in the light. So you must live like people who belong to the light, for it is the light that brings a rich harvest of every kind of goodness, righteousness and truth. Try to learn what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the worthless things that people do. Things that belong to the darkness. Instead, bring them out to the light. It is really too shameful even to talk about the things that they do in secret. And when all things are brought out to the light, then their true nature is clearly revealed. For everything that is clearly revealed becomes light. That is why it is said, wake up sleeper and rise from death and Christ will shine on you. So be careful how you live. Don't live like ignorant people, but like wise people. Make good use of every opportunity you have, because these are evil days. Don't be fools then, but try to find out what the Lord wants you to do. Do not get drunk with wine, which will only ruin you, Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with words of psalms, hymns, and sacred songs. Sing hymns and psalms to the Lord with praise in your hearts. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, always give thanks for everything to God the Father. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, we give thanks. We're glad to gather together in worship and we gather in this place and in this time, but we recognize too that others are gathering with us online and we welcome them in this time of worship. It's sometimes interesting for us to consider why we do this. Week by week, we gather to worship God and to most people passing by the church, it may seem a very peculiar practice. The implications of worshiping someone in our society would often cause those in our society be, to be quite disturbed. They'd probably be concerned that we're engaged in an activity that involves brainwashing and that we really need help to recognize that we're being manipulated. They might ask, if God is really God, then why would such a God need worship from human beings? So does God really need our worship? Others may say that feeling you need to worship a higher being points to an inherent weakness or immaturity in the person. 
an unwillingness to accept responsibility for their own actions and their lives and their decisions. Anne Voskamp has written a great book called A Thousand Blessings. I think it's A Thousand Blessings. I've just forgotten the name of it. A Thousand Gifts, that's it. And uh, in that book, she talks about a variety of things for which she is thankful. She also says this, she says, God is not in need of mag being magnified by us, we who are so small, but quite the reverse. It's our lives that are little, and we sometimes have a fal falsely inflated self. And in worship and giving thanks, we decrease and the world returns to right. I say thanks and God swells within me. The world swells and I'm stirred. So we gather together work, week by week and wor to worship God. But it's useful sometimes to consider why we actually do this. Worship realigns us. It gives the potential to realign us with God and who God really is. You may have noticed that all of our songs until now in our prayer, which is the usual form of prayer that we have at the beginning of a service, have all been about praise and worship to God, adoration of God. It's easy for us to imagine God in an image that we build ourselves and to lose the godness of God. It's easy for us to struggle with these sorts of concepts and with the mind-blowing privilege of simply being in the presence of God as we gather together. In theology, we talk about a whole variety of things, a whole variety of ways of describing God. We talk about God being transcendent, God exceeding anything we can possibly imagine. Again, Anne Voskamp has a great capacity, I think, to express this well. She said, I walk outside and feel insignificant and yet connected, part of something transcendent and vast. I whisper my prayers beneath the silent star fields, sensing that I am reaching divinity. Within all of this mystery, my loudest desperate defiant shouts might not be appropriate. God seems infinitely close, dangerous but familiar faithful and yet unpredictable, loving and yet sometimes not nice. And I heave a great breath. The whole earth is full of God's glory, sky, land and sea, heavy and saturated with God. Why do I always forget this? I'm no different to Jacob waking up from the sleep before the moon rose and saying, surely the Lord is in this place. And I wasn't even aware of it. But he was also afraid when confronted by God and said, what an awesome place this is. It's none other than the house of God, the very gateway of heaven. This moment, this place is none other than the gate of heaven as we gather to worship and God's glory is present. Yet human minds have a limited experience of being able to describe these sorts of realities, a reality that's beyond our full understanding. We see children absorbed in wonder, and yet as adults, we often feel we, we need to have an explanation for these things, for anything that's really important. And yet it's probably a self-imposed explanation that we expect or expectation that we have an explanation. As we respond to God, we can grasp more of what God is like. Pete Greg, Greg, who wrote a number of books on prayer, said it this way, he would prefer to have a little faith in a great, big, unshakable God than a great big unshakable faith in a God that's not really worthy of the name of God. Authentic worship is anchored in biblical themes, in biblical realities, 
in trying to get our heads into something that's greater than ourselves and greater than our own fluctuating temperaments. So we have parts of scripture like the ones we're focused on today. We've heard one entire psalm and part of another one. The psalms regularly point us to these sorts of realities. Today's psalm highlighted the dependence of Israel on God. They were to rejoice in the creator and in the king and to celebrate exuberantly with music and dancing and singing because God had dealt graciously with them and God was taking pleasure in their worship. The psalm I began with talked about a whole wide variety of the characteristics of the nature of God that informs our understanding and helps us to worship God well. Throughout the history of the church, God has raised up people to help reorientate God's people to what God is really like and to be able to focus in prayer on what God is like. Back in the 1400s, Julian and Norwich said, the highest form of prayer is to the goodness of God. God only desires that our souls cling to him with all their strengths and in particular cling to God's goodness. For all the things our mind can think about God, it's thinking about God's goodness that pleases him most and does the most benefit to our souls. But worship doesn't always come naturally or effortlessly to us. It often requires effort. And the Psalms also speak about that. The Psalm today talked about awakening our souls Sometimes that process of awakening ourselves is an act of the will, just as awakening ourselves of a morning can be an act of the will. And many of these psalms are written in very strong language to encourage us to do that, to engage with that, to engage with praising God, even if we don't feel like it, to engage with awakening our souls to worship God and to adore God. We build this sense of worship and adoration through various forms of input and the Psalms are one of those forms. Reading them, hearing them, listening to them can help to build our understanding of God and help us to worship. Focusing on the different names of God in scripture can help us to understand God better and focus on God in worship. Using a prayer from scripture or perhaps a prayer that's a long-standing prayer in the history of the church, reciting a creed, using a user-friendly book on theology that talks about the nature of God can all be very helpful to us. But the goal is to focus our attention on God and on what God is like, on what God's ways are like, on how Jesus embodied that for us. Sometimes music can also act in that way and, and hence hymns of praise like we've sung today can help us. They can be a good stimulus to our adoration. They can enable us to start to think about things we may not ordinarily choose to think about. They can bypass the left hemisphere of our brain to some degree and focus in on things that are beyond our own words and our expressive ability, things that are very creative. I agree with Pete Gregg's statement when he said, I suspect that unemotional worship, the kind that sometimes feels a bit forced or fake, is probably precious to God because it's costly to us. Worship requires effort and attention. But worshiping God also transforms us. When we look at the followers of Jesus in the book of Acts, their God often seems to be bigger than ours. They knew how to kneel before God. They knew and understood the fear of God, the reverence that God deserves. They understood that it could be a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of God. And so their worship came out of that. Worshiping God can change our feelings and our priorities and our perspective. It can change our whole worldview. The Psalms again pick this up because they cover so many topics. They're often written for specific times of day or specific events in the life of people, and they can speak to us in a way that often others can't. They cover the whole gamut of human emotions, often very bluntly and often in great detail. They point us to the realities of God's nature and the ways in which God relates to God's people. 
even over the centuries. They can provoke thanksgiving and lament and praise. They can be our encounter, they can be a means of our encounter with God, with God's love and goodness, with God's power and God's holiness. So worshipping God gives us an, an avenue to express our feelings, to express our questions and to open ourselves to the transforming power of God. And hence, we worship together. We don't only worship together, but we do often worship together. And scripture encourages us to worship together because there's that possibility then that together we can help one another. We can encourage one another and challenge one another and prompt one another. Pete Gregg has said, when your soul is spent and you've run out of imagination and initiative, it's sometimes a relief to be told what to say by someone you trust. Public worship, use of prayers that have been meaningful to the church over time can sometimes do that for us. They have a timeless value to us. And worship, of course, together in a place like this may not always cater to our individual needs or preferences, but it honours the priority of God, of God being here to meet with us it reminds us that God in Christ loves us, wants to speak to us, wants to work with us. It inspires us to remain open to the work of God and God's spirit. It's valuable in helping us to identify people that can help us in that journey, people and places and activities that resonate with us and provide us with a source of refreshment and growth and life. And by engaging in those things that can help to renew our lives. Joining together with others and using music, sometimes music that we may not be inclined to use ourselves, nevertheless can surprise us and encourage us and comfort and challenge us. And this process of public worship gives us that sort of an opportunity. It also gives us an opportunity to express music that flows from our hearts that we see and really resonate with and want to express to God. The focus of music is often the Psalms. They're a great resource to us in our faith. As we gather together, there's opportunity to contemplate God and to express our contemplations of God, to worship together, to benefit from one another. And we often underestimate the value of that community and of how it encourages our faith. In her book, Gilead, Marilyn Robinson said, when a church is full of silence and prayer, there is something deeply profound about that place. It's far more profound than the musings of the most noted scholar. So why do we worship? Well, we worship to open our minds and our hearts to a deeper understanding of God. We worship to give expression to our own personal circumstances and the feelings we bring and a readiness to be open to encounter God again and for God to ta transform us. We worship because we've responded to the call of God to us individually and to God's call to be together, to share together, to worship together, to learn and be encouraged and prompted by one another. Worshiping God changes us, intentionally giving time to such an activity to focus on God, to praise and worship God can change our whole perspective on life on other people, on the day we're about to face, on ourselves and on God. Derek Prince once said, if you have 10 minutes to pray, spend the first eight minutes in praise. You can pray about a great deal in just two minutes. So as we go into this week, it may be good for us to perhaps spend a bit more time in some of those Psalms, a bit more time reflecting on the nature of God and on what God calls us to in the church and of how praising and worshipping God can equip us for the life God calls us to. And so we are going to sing together a hymn that talks about God filling us with that desire to praise and worship him. Fill thou my life, O Lord my God, in every part with praise.
We have a, um, a video clip to watch today, which just is going to tell us a little bit more about the Acts 2 project that we have been speaking about the last few weeks. This is this project where the Uniting Church as a whole is looking at its future, particularly as an Australia-wide movement and how we may respond to the changing times in that respect. Now, I know that the words of this can sometimes be a little bit fast for people to pick up on, so I'll try to read it as we go through because I've seen it a few times. So, But you will see the words on the screen yourself as well. Thanks, Ross. All across this vast land, from capital cities to the outback heart, you will find more than 2,000 United Church communities of faith following Jesus, worshipping in over 45 languages, growing as disciples, and living out God's call to mission and ministry in the world. These communities are the beating heart of our church. They are also at the heart of Act 2, the major project of the United Church led by the National Assembly. Act 2 is exploring transformative change for the future. As a church, we're facing many challenges we can't ignore. Threats to sustainability, complex structures and a siloed national church. In the 45 years since our formation, much has changed with us and our world. We also have many strengths and opportunities and much to celebrate. After two years of discussion across the Uniting Church, the 16th Assembly in May 2022 affirmed the importance and urgency of this work. It sent the Act 2 project into a new phase led by a national steering committee and a project unit. Act 2 is here to help the whole Uniting Church discern the shape of its future structures that support flourishing local communities shaped by our national identity, enabling diverse ministry and mission a church shaped for God's future. From now until the 17th Assembly in July 2024, we're engaging in a whole church process of discernment. We want to hear from you and your community. What's life giving about your community of faith and being part of the Uniting Church? What's hard, frustrating or hindering the ministry and mission of your community? For those things that are hard, what could we do to help what do we need to change, begin, renew, or leave behind so we can faithfully follow Christ in our time and place? Share your experiences, insights, and ideas with us. With prayer, thanksgiving, hope, and courage, we seek to embrace the Spirit's calling. And you can find out more by Googling X2 or going to x2uca.com. And you can also give input to anyone on the church council or myself or, and we will continue to feed that input back to the assembly as we seek to look at what things we should change in the light of how our world is in these days. Now, I know that we have something else to listen to today too. I know that Ray has a, a paper to bring us in relationship to our safe church processes. Thanks, Ray. Good morning, everyone. In line with um, policy of the Uniting Church, I'm required to read the following, following statement on behalf of Church Council related to keeping children safe. Now, it's clear we don't have children regularly attending our Sunday worship, but there are occasions when we do have children here. There are a number of occasional events through the year where we, we have children uh, within our facilities, and in particular, a number of members of our congregation um, regularly interact with children on behalf of the church through Kids Hope. So this statement certainly is relevant to us. It's moderately long. A statement of commitment to keeping children safe. We're committed to implementing the child safe policy of the Uniting Church in Australia, Synod of Victoria and Tasmania, so that all children involved in our activities services, events, and programs are safe and feel safe. We are committed to providing safe environments 
where children are cared for, respected, nurtured and sustained. We are committed to in embedding child safety and well-being in all we do, including in our worship and governance. And sorry, including in our leadership and governance. We have zero tolerance of all forms of child abuse and we will do all in our power to safeguard children from abuse. We are committed to informing children and young people about their rights and to their participation in decisions that affect them. We'll take their opinions and suggestions seriously. We are committed to informing and involving families and communities in promoting child safety and well-being. We are committed to respecting diversity and promoting equity. This includes promoting cultural safety for First Nations children. We are committed to ensuring people who work with children are suitable for this work and committed to child safety and well-being. We will ensure that anyone who works with children is recruited, screened, trained and supervised well. We are committed to child focused, culturally appropriate complaints processes. We'll take complaints seriously, record, respond promptly and thoroughly and report abuse to the appropriate authorities. We are committed to ensuring our leaders and volunteers undertake ongoing education training on child safety. We are committed to ensuring our physical and online environments are safe and promote safety. And we are committed to reviewing our practices, procedures and policies. This includes learning from our accidents and incidents. The Church Council of St Mark's Mornington um, is committed to this, safety, um, this statement. Thank you. Dick is going to lead our congregation today in the prayers of the people. Thanks, Dick. Joy's been talking about worship uh, in our service today already. Uh, I had planned these prayers not knowing what Joy was going to say. And uh, I'm, uh, it involves us doing a lot of reading from the screen. I hope it's not too much at once, but uh, I'm bringing an adapted Lord's Prayer and around it, forming our own prayers. Uh, I found the Lord's Prayer is a powerful aid in our worship and toward our mission. Uh, this lit liturgy can help us to understand and practice in a communal setting ways in which we, the church, can embody the practices and politics of Jesus. We begin by saying the, the Lord's Prayer in a form that's slightly different and then taking each phrase and uh, developing that. So let's pray. The Lord's Prayer. All together. Our Father in the heavens, may your name be sanctified, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Do not bring us into temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. And then a statement, we as the St Mark's congregation recognise that God calls us to care about every aspect of life 
and to find holy significance within the ordinary. We also seek to be a praying people formed by the model of the Lord's Prayer. Let Jesus' concerns become our concerns. Our Father in the heavens, we are a com Sorry, Ross. We are a community gathered by our Father God, who is holy, just and loving and welcoming to all, who is present in our lives, who calls us to take up our cross and follow. We respond to God's love by welcoming all people into our praying and worshipping community. May your name be sanctified. We are seeking to declare by our community life that you, Lord, are a holy and just God. Guide our worship life to declare that you are God of all aspects of human existence. Guide our daily personal actions so we each show forth your holiness. Enable the confessions of our mouths, hearts and lives to show forth your, your love and truth at work in us. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we pray for your kingdom to come, Father, we recognise that it is already at hand calling us to action. May your spirit empower us now to play our small part in bringing about your kingdom. We are committed to living out the ethics taught by Christ as we understand them in our own culture and context. Remind us, Father God, that we are dying to self as we live for you. Give us this day our daily bread. Author, giver and sustainer of life, and giver of every good gift, we confess our dependence on you. We rejoice in your gifts and treasure all human life and the interdependence of all living things. We thank you for those who provide so much for our daily needs and we seek to use only what we need. In your strength, both individually and nationally, we seek to live simply and share generously with those most in need in this community and in the world community. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. We confess that we are individually and corporately sinners that need the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. We rejoice, Lord, in your forgiveness as a community. Seek through your spirit to forgive those who have harmed us, our families, friends, and even our country, just as we have been forgiven as you have turned us from your enemies into your friends we seek to restore those who are estranged from us and from our community of healing and liberation do not bring us into temptation but rescue us from the evil one though we are saved and redeemed through the gracious act of christ's life death and resurrection, we still fail as his followers and need your Holy Spirit's power to resist temptation. We also recognise that we are primarily in a spiritual battle with the evil one and seek to live facing that conflict in your strength 
and to stand in solidarity with those who are also enslaved and under attack. For, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. I don't know of any other specific announcements for our own local community here today. Quiet. Thank you. Coffee and chat on Tuesday afternoon. Two, two o'clock? Two o'clock, yes, at um, Biscatini's. Any are welcome to join in that time together. The Uniting Church Ministers Fraternal and the Interchurch Ministers Fraternal have been contacted during this week um, with a further initiative in relationship to the Yes campaign in regards to the forthcoming referendum. And, and uh, there is this walk that is going to happen. There's a few flyers about this outside, around the church buildings. That happens next Sunday. So, of course, this is really the only Sunday we can be made aware of it, although it is Sunday afternoon and is going from Dramana down to Rosebud. The Uniting Church Assembly, together with assemblies of various churches across the nation, have um, said that they want to support these ventures, and that's why we're bringing it to your attention. Though we do recognise that we all have our own individual perspectives and the right to hold those. We're going to continue to worship God, and we're, in doing that, we're going to acknowledge the gifts that have been brought into our church community in physical form and those that have been sent electronically. And we'll do that as we commit both ourselves and these gifts to the work of God. Would you like to stand as we do that? Gracious God, we thank you that your love binds us together in ways that we could never achieve on our own. Your richness can encompass our diversity. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all your gracious activity in people's lives over the centuries. And we offer these gifts in the service of our lives as signs of gratitude and willingness to make your love known through our witness to you, our love for you and our witness and love to neighbours far and wide. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we conclude, we're going to sing together a hymn that talks about our, our praise and worship of God, but also about the fact that this takes us back into the world in which we encounter all the issues of daily life and hopefully can give us a good perspective on those issues. Lord of creation, to you be all praise.
So as we go into this week, may we go knowing that God's love embraces us in all that life may bring our way, that Jesus goes before us, enabling us to grow in knowledge and love of God, and that God's spirit intercedes for us, equipping us for that all that we face in life. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen.